Hello and welcome back to the old realms. The new update has just arrived and I am extremely excited about this. This is the Season of Doom update and they've actually added two cultures. Can you believe it? Can you believe it that they've added two cultures? It's absolutely insane amounts of work and I, I gotta say, you know, it feels as though these people should be employed by Games Workshop, in my opinion. It feels like that. It feels like they should be making their own game at this point. Anyway, let's enter the old world and actually get a good look at what's going on here. This is one of the new cultures, actually, that we're seeing on the load screen right now. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I've I've uh, sort of, uh, you know, um, dived in a little bit ahead of time because I was so excited. So I was like, oh, yes, I must check it out. I must check it out and see exactly what's going on here. Uh, by the way, if you want to download it yourself, there is a link in the description. They have made things so much faster as well, by the way. And this is obviously a really, really big deal because um, I'm going to talk about something really, really boring at the moment. So you may want to just, you know, visit the uh, the mod page while I'm doing this or whatever, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, it's also on Steam, by the way. So you will be able to download this through Steam Workshop. You're going to be able to download it through ModDB, whichever one you prefer. And what's really cool about it is that you know how it used to be that it used to take, uh, I think it was like, what, 20 to 70 minutes to do the shader cache, to do the shader caching thing um, way back in the previous version. Now that is not the case. Now when you first load up the game, it does take a little bit of time to start. And I'm going to say uh, it took me about 15 minutes, I think, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I think 15 minutes, most likely. And then I went into the shader caching. And that took me no time at all. That was literally about five, 10 minutes. So all in all, it took me about half an hour to get this up and running. Whereas before, in the previous version, I'm not sure what they did to make this much more optimized, but uh, before it would take me uh, maybe close to an hour. So they have literally halved the time that you have to spend getting anything set up. And I absolutely love that. I think that is absolutely fantastic. And huge props to the modding team and their passion for, for Bannerlord and the community because this is, these are the kinds of things that make games have a much longer lifespan, you know, because obviously uh, when it comes to games like Bannerlord, Warband, the lifeblood of those games is, you know, after you've finished the base game, you're not, I'm not sure whether you're gonna play them again, uh, you know, almost immediately, but having a different world to explore is absolutely amazing in my opinion. Anyway, we're gonna play as the Azrai here, Azrei, I actually don't know how to say that. So, you know, these are the wood elves basically. And you can see here that the Azrai are the elvish inhabitants of Athol Loran. They are a suspicious isolationist and savage kin who live their lives surrounded by the nature of Athol Loran. Their magical forest home is as dangerous as it is beautiful. And its unforgiving nature has sharpened the skills of its people to a razor's edge. The Azrai live under the teachings of Isha and Kurnos as hunters and warriors defending the weave and natural world but darker voices ever seek to tempt them to slaughter and mayhem. And then we obviously have the other people right here. These are the Ionia. I'm not going to read this right now, so you can just pause if you'd like, and you can read that for yourself. And then, of course, we have uh, Muthion right here, as well as Britannia, Empire Man, Vampire Counts, all those wonderful guys um, that we've played beforehand. I love the moving backgrounds, by the way. I love the moving backgrounds. Have you noticed that it actually moves slightly? Have you, have you noticed that? That is so cool. Look at that. Look, look at it. Look at it moving. <laughs> that is so cool. And it's, it's moving in such a way that it actually uh, makes you think that you're like looking at someone from, from across the way there. That's really, really amazing in my opinion. Anyway, okay. So we're just going to give him some longer hair and then we're just going to go forward. I'm not going to spend too long customizing my character because I just want to, I just want to jump in as best as we can. So basically... What do we want to do? What do we want to be? Do we want to be a spellcaster or do we want to be a bow user? In my opinion, I feel like what we should do is we should be a spellcaster. So I am going to do what I can to increase my spell 
Uh, what is it? Spellcraft? Yeah, there we go. Increase my spellcraft as much as possible. So Survivor of the Forest is what we're going to take here. And then we have the ability to choose one of the deities that the Wood Elves um, worship. And you can see here that we can do the Hunter. He's going to give us a huge amount of uh, riding skill and bow skill, as you see here. As well as the Kith Band symbol. And then we have Isha here. We have Loek, and that's the War Dancer. So obviously it's a little bit more melee focused. And then we have... Uh, Vol the Maker, and you can see here that actually increases our smithing skill. And then we have the last one, which increases our pole arms, two-handed, uh, roguery a little bit, leadership, just a kind of, uh, you know, all over the place kind of thing. But what we're going to do is obviously we're going to do Isha, because, let's face it, we want spellcraft. Oh yes, we want spellcraft as much as possible. So, okay, there are two career paths that we can currently take. I don't know whether they're going to add more, but... I personally feel like they've done so much work already. I'm not complaining in the least. I am literally blown away by what they've been able to do here. But anyway, you have the War Dancer. This is not technically associated with a career path as far as I'm aware. Because it says here that as you, you know, when you select the Way Watcher, you then have the Way Watcher's career. Same thing with the Spell Singer. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose Spell Singer, of course, because we are going to then be provided with some additional discipline, some additional spellcraft skill. We're going to get some writing skill and so on. So that's what we're going to take. And then we're going to be playing on Bannerlord difficulty and uh, Disable Battle Death for all heroes is by default on because obviously that's going to break the game in some way or another. So let's actually go ahead and choose our banner. I will just choose a bear because that's generally what I tend to choose most of the time. Anyway, let's choose something a little bit like this. And we're going to call ourselves Bear Tilt, as you might expect. I am not very imaginative. And we'll call him Bruce. Why not? It's not Barney. It's Bruce. Why not? All right. So here we are. We now get the opportunity to choose a specific lore. And you can choose between Lore of Fire, Light, Heaven, and Metal. And from my perspective, I actually feel like I should choose Lore of Metal. I know, I know, I've never actually used this before, but I feel like that could be quite fun. I know Lore of Heavens is also really, really fun. Um, by the way, if you join the Old Realms Discord, they have a huge document where they will just go through every single spell and uh, a, a how to install guide and basically everything that you would ever want about the mod. So very, very useful, very, very helpful. So from my perspective, I feel like I should probably do Law of Metal or should I? You know what? I went with Law of Metal with my test character. So I'm literally just going to go with that with uh, with this one as well. And we're going to see how that goes. Maybe it's going to suck. Maybe I'm going to suck with it. Who knows? But this is the new map. We're going to take a look at the new map real fast. So you can see here, this is obviously the Empire down here. The Empire, Empire, Empire. Massive, massive amounts of Empire. And then we obviously have uh, other people in the center here. Then we have Britannia up here. And then, of course, we have the Wood Elves in between. And where is... Um, <laughs> Wait a minute, where is, uh, where, where, where are the vampire counts? Oh, they're, they're here. There we go. There, there are the vampire counts around here. That is wonderful. Castle Drakenhof, of course. And, uh, then, of course, we do have, um, yeah, Britannia up here. And we have, uh, who, who are those other guys, by the way? Who, who's the, uh, Eonir? I'm actually not entirely sure. I'm not very well versed in Warhammer Fantasy, I must admit. Um, so, you know, <laughs> Uh, do forgive me, do forgive me. Okay, so yeah, anyway, um, there's a very, very cool, unique mechanic associated with this particular character archetype. And I'm very interested to see how this goes. So let me just very quickly run over here, try to recruit some troops, because we will be able to actually win quite nicely, in my opinion. So let me just be a bit careful. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't want to recruit troops from anywhere else. I actually want to be a Wood Elf Loyalist in this, so I am just going to be recruiting Wood Elves, because obviously we've never actually played with Wood Elf, uh, Wood Elf characters before, so it would be really, really fun to, um, you know, check that out, in my opinion. Anyway, we're going to be increasing our Spellcraft, as you might expect. We're just going to increase our Spellcraft to the maximum it can be, 
and we may in fact even be increasing our faith. I'm actually not entirely sure whether that's a good idea, but you could see here that if we do increase our faith to 50, we gain plus three hit points for every point in discipline. So that's literally going to give me plus 15 HP off the bat because I already have five in discipline, which is actually insane. And the more faith we have, the more ward save we have. And ward save is obviously fantastic. So use combat prayers. That's what we've got to do. Anyway, this is our career uh, career career tab. And you can see here we already have one free career point, which is absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait to see what this looks like. But you can see here, spell singers have a unique bond with Athol Lauren. They are bound to the forest through magical ritual, giving them, giving them uh, actually the same communal awareness that dryads or treekin enjoy without sacrificing their individuality. While the lesser spell singers commune with the forest, the greater ones can reshape it for building of homes or destruction of enemies. In Athol Lauren, spell singers are artists and mages, and invariably are the ones that travel outside the forest to engage in rare diplomacy. While both men and women become spell singers, the women typically become stronger due to Ariel's bond with the forest of Athol Lauren. Oh, so I should have been uh, should have been a female character. Ah, oh, my bad. I hope that that is actually just flavor text and that isn't actually a real thing because I was kind of wondering about that considering Britannia has the whole, you know, damsel thing going on and I was wondering whether that was going to be a similar thing here, but... I'm kind of hoping that that isn't, but if it is, by all means, let me know, and I'll just re-roll my character in uh, in preparation for the next episode. So anyway, so now we have path shaping. So path shaping, these are all of the abilities that you're going to gain for putting points into this, which is obviously fantastic. Gain 15% ward save. How can you say no to that? And then you obviously, uh, you know, that's just one of them. And then you have tree singing here, increases the magic winds of uh, winds of magic capacity by 10, gain 20 harmony daily, which is actually insane. If you think about it, you'll, you'll see exactly what harmony actually does in due time. So I'm actually going to be getting this because I want to get 20 harmony daily as soon as possible. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, you may be wondering, okay, what's Harmony? Well, obviously it's the mod that you need to actually play this because, you know, that is um, <laughs> that is indeed the mod that you need to play this. Yeah, that's the only mod that you need to play this. And um, <laughs> it's also a form of currency in the game. <laughs> and uh, you're going to get to see exactly why that is really, really cool. And now we're going to be taking a look at our magic here. So we currently have summer heat available. A small area radiates unbearable heat, causing fatigue, impairing movement speed by 50%, and making the enemies slightly vulnerable to fire damage for 15 seconds. Now, obviously, if you're going to be taking Law of Fire instead of Law of Metal, then this is going to be a synergistic hex for you to be able to use. Unfortunately, I didn't do that, so we're going to just move on. I otherwise then have, of course, Law of Metal. I don't have anything that I can actually use in the Law of Metal school at the moment. And then we have Law of Beasts. So we actually know three different laws, which is actually kind of amazing. And we have Amber Spear here. So the caster throws a javelin-like Amber Spear in the targeted direction that penetrates multiple targets. So the best course of action to use with this is, as you might expect, to try and line it up so that it penetrates multiple people. You want to be able to penetrate people as deeply as possible because that's going to give you the most experience. And of course, whenever you see those kind of, you know, that kind of experience pop up on your screen, it's going to be the most satisfying thing and the most pleasurable too. Anyway, unleashes the primal savagery of the caster's allies, driving them into a frenzy, grants a 25% physical damage and attack speed bonus for a duration of 60 seconds. The beast unleashed is probably the, one of the most powerful things that you can get in the lore of beasts in my opinion at least if you're going for a buffing build obviously <laughs> that very much depends on if you're if you're actually going to go for a buffing build because you may just want to go for flock of doom or you might want to go for the curse of anra here or something like that because let's face it these are both really really strong um spells i think they might have actually changed these though because uh as far as i remember when I was playing my Damsel, we actually did get Law of Beasts. We were playing a Law of Beasts Damsel, and it was extremely powerful. Very, very powerful. Maybe too powerful. And maybe they've done some balancing on that. Um, but if, if so, that's absolutely fine, because the Beast Unleashed is definitely what I'm looking at right here. And I'm also looking for something like this. A magical skin you know, surrounds the wizard, protecting him from physical damage. 40% for a duration of 40 seconds. It's pretty crazy. 
pretty crazy. Okay, so yeah, anyway, we're gonna take a look at, um, you know, our spells a little bit closer oh as and when we get to the point where we're actually gonna be, you know, <laughs> needing to do so and uh, when we actually gain some additional experience and so on and so forth. I am a little bit worried about actually dealing with these enemies. So yeah, this is the new spell wheel, by the way. So uh, the new spell wheel is activated by holding Q. So just so you know that. And we are otherwise just going to be attempting to do as much damage as possible with this. Now, uh, I don't actually want to... Ah, uh, yeah, I should probably use this, shouldn't I? There we go. Three points in Spellcraft. Oh, no, it didn't actually work. Oh, no, it did. Whew. I was a bit worried there for a second. I thought to myself, I'm going to die. Oh, no, no, I didn't, though. That was that was good. You saw that, right? Are you, I, I'm not actually dead. Yes, no, I'm not. Okay, so that's wonderful. Now, we are fighting at night, which I'm not a big fan of. I do not like fighting at night. I am big, big, big trouble with fighting at night. But yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Because we are... Oh! My forces are actually fine. <laughs> I was panicking there for a second. I was thinking to myself, are we actually going to win? <laughs> are we actually going to win? No, no, we did, we did. And so we gained a Dryad. Look at that. We gained a Dryad. And these things, they don't level up. But you can see here that they are insane. They have some of the strongest stats that I've seen ever. And uh, you can see here in comparison, the militia is <laughs> kind of terrible. It's actually super funny. Um, but this is, the, this is the exact reason why this is such a fun class. We're going to be getting uh, Glade Guards here. And I'm actually going to get rid of one, um, I think, because I need the space, funnily enough. And we're just going to be getting some additional loot. And basically what we want to try to do now is just go into as many battles with outlaws as possible. Because I actually don't know what my renown value actually... Oh, oh wow. We're starting at zero. So that's... <laughs> that is quite harsh. But that's okay. You know, that's fine. That's fine. As long as we can find some... Ah, hello there. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Fight me. Fight me, sir. Yes, fight me. Ah, uh, no, I, I, I can't fight. I can't fight those beastmen. The beastmen are just going to absolutely wreck us. So it would probably be a good idea not to get destroyed by them right now, at least. Let's go into the career screen. Yes. Ah, there we go. I finally. Ah, yes, I have another. I have another career point. So let's get another career point in tree singing. Now, the main reason why this is going to be absolutely fantastic is because of us just basically running around a huge amount and upkeep for dryad units being reduced uh you know getting 20 harmony per day i mean really it's just so so good now you may be wondering what's harmony yeah as i said i'm gonna answer that question in just a moment once we reach the oak of ages which is literally just here i almost ran by it and so this is your kind of unique thing that i'm not entirely sure if every single class can interact with this but i'm going to assume that this is mostly a spell singer thing so tree spirits if you go here, you can communicate with the tree spirits around the oak. You can commune with the forest, which is going to cost you 100 harmony. You can also rouse tree men for 800. And you can also relieve tree spirits. Or, uh, you know, you can basically say to them, okay, I don't really want to have this dryad in my party. It's going to give me, um, I assume, some some harmony. I'm not, I'm not actually entirely sure um, what, what's going on there, but... Anyway, as you see here, we also have forest bindings. So you can see here, forest binding is used to upgrade and maintain troops of the wood elves, as well as retrieve upgrades at the Oak of Ages. So our current active symbol is the Treekin symbol. So Treekin Forest Harmony Upkeep is 50% lower, which is actually insane if you think about it. And then Forest Harmony is unbound, which means, uh, which means maximum health has been reduced by 35%, health regeneration reduced, and winds regeneration reduced. Okay. Um, yeah, so we need to obviously increase that. So next rank is bound, as you see right there. And uh, yeah, you're going to get to see how that works, I suppose, as time goes on. However, there are also other things that you can do. So you can even build outposts at this particular place. You can increase your maximum health. Uh, I think increase your maximum health by 10%. And you can also increase the daily harmony gain from settlements by 20%. So there's a, a bunch of different things that you can do. And you also have the ability to do this. So you can unlock pathways to various places. And that will reduce the travel cost, return to the oak from the route exit, healing aura, all troops and heroes are healed upon using the world route. So there's a huge amount to look at here. And we also have 
the, the, the symbols. Uh, choose one symbol activated for your party. The symbols provide strong enhancements, yet they will also provide strong disadvantages. Choose wisely. Only one symbol can be active at a time. So in other words, I currently have the treekin symbol, and if you want to take a look at the others, this is what they do. So decipher the symbol of the kith band, which increases your party size by 50%. Forest harmony gain is decreased by 25% and wages are increased by 15%. So basically that's just, you know, um, trading resources, you know, uh, wage resources and so on and so forth for increased party size. And then you have the war dancer, the player and companion gain 25% additional health and recover wounds 25% faster. All troops, however, heal 25% slower and forest harmony is gained 25% slower. And then you obviously have Magical Chalk, which removes symbol change costs if you want to do that as well. So that's basically what the uh, what the Harmony resource is for. I absolutely love this system. I think this is extremely, extremely clever. And they have implemented it very wonderfully, in my opinion. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to make my way over here because I actually realized that my party is starving. So I do need to I do need to actually do something about that, don't I? So let's just sell um, sell all this. I don't actually have anything else in my um, <laughs> in my inventory. So, yes, I should probably just buy some of this. Uh, I kind of want to buy quite a lot so that I can increase my morale a little bit more. And I also want to go into the tournament here, but I am kind of worried about doing that because I only have 10. Yes, I only have 10 in one-handed skill and it's not actually likely I'm going to get one-handed. It's more likely I'm going to get bows and things like that in Wood Elf territory. Also, there's a bunch of shrines in the area too and I'm actually not entirely sure. Let me go to the Shrine of Isha. Let's see what it actually gives us. Okay, so pray to receive the uh, Blessing of Isha. And that is going to give us nine skill points in faith, which is very, very nice indeed. So now we can gain access to all nov novice level. Uh, bear in mind, I do want to get to 50. As you recall, it's going to give me uh, some nice some nice HP. And kind of wondering if there's actually something else that could be really, really useful here. I mean, I don't know. These these developers, these, these mod creators, they really know how to make skill trees. Uh, that's one thing that I have always really admired about the old realms, because these new skill trees, the career options as well, it just it just gives you so much to choose from, and they're so fun, you know? It's just a lot of fun to choose from all these things. Okay, I'm actually going to try to go after the 16. Let's try and kill them. Don't attack. No, uh, you absolute imbeciles. I do not want you to help me. Ah, uh, never mind. Okay. Yeah, I did not want to have that happen. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so I guess we will just go in against the 24 then. Should I really go in against the 24? That's a little bit harsh, isn't it? Uh, I mean, they want to fight me, but I don't really want to fight them. I feel like that's actually going to be kind of... Yeah, that's going to be bad, in my opinion. I feel like that's going to be bad, so... Let's not do that. Let's go uh, Let's go and try and find some other outlaws. Here we go. Okay, so we've got seven. Oh, there we go. Eleven. Perfect. Come on out. Do it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, this is the funny thing about the old realms. I always Warriors, love fighting in this, in this mod because it's literally just so fun to see these. Wow. Okay, look at that. That was some insane sharpshooting right there. It's always fun to see these characters engage in battle. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to um, use the Wrath of the Wood career ability. I'm not entirely sure why, but I don't currently have the, uh, I don't know, uh, the uh, amount of, um, maybe the amount of Winds of Magic to, to be able to do that. Maybe that's, that's maybe the reason. Anyway, I'm just going to try and cast this on as many people as possible so that I gain more Spellcraft. I want to try to get as much Spellcraft as possible. So casting as much as possible is really going to make all the difference. So let's see if I can do something here. Nice. We penetrated both of those fellows. They very much appreciated it. And maybe we can do a little bit more here. Ah, that didn't really do much. Oh, I literally almost died. Okay, that's not very good. <laughs> I have so little HP, I think. I have very, very little HP, so that's not going to be particularly good, is it? Okay, let's just kill that guy. My Dryad is just running in and just absolutely murdering everyone. 
I like that. Yes, I like that a great deal. Okay, but this is a very potent combination, in my opinion. I feel like this is a very potent combination. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. We're going to we're gonna see, I suppose. So I'm going to have to get rid of some more wood elves, which I'm not a big fan of, because they are indeed providing me with some much-needed ranged attackers. However, the problem arises where we are inherently going to be a bit... Uh, we're going to have a bit of a problem, aren't we? The wood elf circlet. Does this give me any benefit apart from... Apart from looking cool? Because, I mean, I've got to say, the armor all looks fantastic. You know, it really does. I mean, you, you already knew that. I mean, you can see it, right? Um, but yeah, uh, funny thing is, I think you actually gain... Uh, do you not gain something for having lighter armor? I'm actually not entirely sure, but whatever the case, I am just going to... Oh, I, I don't actually know what I'm going to do. Yeah, no, no, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to gonna keep the circlet on just in case but if I do come across a, uh, a helmet that is slightly better then I'll probably just I don't know I'll probably just go with that but there's definitely gonna be a reason why we want to you know do other things okay so um, let me see I want to do medicine as well I think medicine is gonna be extremely powerful with the tree kin build and also the, the Law of Metal build. So we're just going to put a point into medicine right now. And uh, let me see. Okay, it's going to take me an age to get to Renown 50. So I'm actually wondering whether I should just bite the bullet and go straight in to a tournament. I, uh, I'm not a big fan for me personally. I'm not a big fan of it, but... Um, Maybe maybe we could do something. I don't know increase maximum health by 10% I guess we could do that increase party size by 10% there we go. I increase party size by 20% um, uh, Actually by 10% even and increase maximum health by 10% okay, let's do that as well. Okay, so we now have Your winds of magic regenerates 25% faster. So that's what that blessing does. Okay, so what does the other blessing do? Because uh, this this is about to wear off in just a moment. So I could technically receive the blessing of this guy. And then we could see exactly what that gives me. Okay, so let's see what this gives me. All ranged troops in your party deal an additional extra 10%. Wow, that's actually pretty good. And I gained a significant amount of faith skill from that too. So I'm very, very pleased about that. And I did increase my party size by a small margin. Which I gotta say is not exactly amazing. But it is actually not bad because after every single battle if I gain a dryad and these dryads have incredibly good I'm just going to auto resolve this um, these dryads have really really good stats I don't see a reason why I would be uh, you know not taking them for any reason I mean yeah these guys are obviously ranged and they are very very good but I personally feel like maybe it's not a particularly useful thing to do. Okay, so ah, we have a traveling merchant. While journeying along the dusty roads, a unique sight unfolds before your eyes. A colorful caravan, a mobile emporium amidst the quiet landscape. As you draw near, a traveling merchant approaches. With a welcoming smile, he introduces you to tales of distant realms and beckons you to take a look at his wares. Browse his wares. Okay, so obviously he's got some great stuff. But I am never, ever, 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 ever going to be able to afford any of these things in the early game. It's going to be extremely difficult. So, um, yeah, but these are amazing. And I would love to be able to afford the Spell, spell Singer crown. But I unfortunately do not have the money. <laughs> Very clearly. Very clearly I do not have the money. Uh, funnily enough, I oh, wait. Are you serious right now? Is he serious? <gasps> I might be able to get this. Oh, I might be able to get this. Look at this. It actually gives me 10% magical damage amplification. I don't even know whether that is actually even that useful with my current build, to be honest. Because if I'm a buffing, debuffing build, it doesn't really do that much. If you think about it. So maybe it's not even necessary. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sell everything that I can here. And as you can see, I'm literally going to be paying 585. That is quite a lot. Ah, uh, oh, that's kind of sad. You know what? I'm I'm literally going. To, I am gonna do it. I am going to do it. There we go. 
All right, so we got an amazing helmet and very, very surprisingly was able to trade up, basically, because we literally just traded up our, uh, our, our circlet that had no magical damage amplification and something for the, that did. And we did that for 500 gold, which I think is pretty amazing, if you do say, you know, if I do say so myself, shall we say. Uh, but yeah, um, but this is also the reason why I said that getting that harmony buff was absolutely amazing too. Uh, upkeep for Dryad units is reduced by 10%. Probably going to be doing that. For every known spell, increase party size by three. That's also going to be extremely powerful for us early game. So getting more career points, getting more, um, you know, getting more Dryad, uh, Dryad focused, you know, perks basically, that is going to be the most impactful thing for us. So, okay, uh, now I am in a bit of a quandary here because I have very little money and I have even f uh, even small yeah, even smaller amounts of food. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. Oh, I found someone. I found someone. Yes, yes, finally, finally. Okay, we found some outlaws and I am, whew, I am extremely pleased about this. I was so incredibly worried for a second. Okay, yeah, so the ability, it says the ability is not charged, so I'm going to assume that we need to, I don't, I don't even know what, stay in battle for some time? I don't know, I probably need to read this. Probably need to read some, I don't know, documentation about it or something like that for us to actually know what's going on with it, but um, Take yeah, position. at the moment Take I have position. no idea, so we're just going to have to make do with what we've got going on. Okay, so I'm just going to cast this to increase my spellcraft, um, because that's literally all I can really do, and then we're just going to be shooting this javelin. The javelin is absolutely, I'm going to say it, pretty terrible, but it is a very, very early spell, so of course it is pretty terrible. Deep okay, so I'm just going to tell the infantry to charge in here, and then we're just going to try to snipe these guys, boom. Nice. I'm I'm getting very few uh, spellcraft points for um, attacking these guys. I gotta say. There we go. Nice. Oh, and he gained a level. Nice. That's even better. You know why? Because we've got career points now. Oh yeah. And that's you know I feel like Bannerlord really needs that extra thing. It needs something that is going to provide you with a, an additional way that you can customize your character. Because obviously, you know, it, it's all very well and good, you know, uh, putting, um, I don't know, putting a point into, you know, uh, put, what should we say, putting a focus point into something. But it's so much more exciting being able to get something that is somewhat tangible to the matters at hand. And I'm talking about, obviously, something that is to do with your specific character class. And I think that is actually really, really poignant. Anyway, let's just increase my faith some more here. And then we'll go back onto the career screen. And as you can see, yes, look at this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be able to increase my party size. I've increased my party size by a small amount. It's not going to give me a huge amount, but it is going to give me... Uh, wait a minute, it didn't actually work. <laughs> oh no, it didn't actually work. Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure what happened with that. Hopefully it will work and it is just not showing yet. Maybe it just has to update or something like that. But anyway, we do have a little bit of loot that I can sell. So uh, that's one thing that I really, really like about the old realms as well. It does tend to be quite, um, I wouldn't say forgiving, but it does tend to give you quite a lot of monetary ways to recover from very, very bad situations. Like, for example, you saw me just here, you know, having some problems. So, yeah, anyway, let's, um, let's, uh, let's get another blessing, shall we? Let's get another blessing, because we're going to need to do that. And uh, look at that. Seven skill points in faith. And what did we get? All troops in your party get an extra 15%. Whoa, this is, whoa, this is the best one so far. This is very, very good. Okay, uh, let's actually do a task, shall we? Once his daughter found. Uh, I don't I don't really want to do that, but maybe this is going to get me the opportunity to take a look at the village. Maybe the village has been completely changed. I'm actually not entirely sure. Uh, also, I don't have super speed or any other mod installed at the moment. Um, so bear that in mind. Okay, 620. Sure, okay, fine. I'll try it. 
and uh, oh yeah, no, no, it does, it does. Oh, yep, yep, yep. It is completely different. Yeah, yeah. The the scene has been created. I can't wait to get into some sieges. Actually, I cannot wait to get into some sieges. That is going to be super, super fun, especially with the fact that I can indeed debuff opponents massively with Law of Metal. And uh, speaking of that, I obviously don't have enough money to be able to purchase any spell books, which really grinds my gears but you know we can't really do much about that anyway ah with the help of your scouting skill you're able to do that their direction is marked with an arrow in the campaign map and there it is oh that's nice i like that thank you very much oh that is so much better that is so much better is that a is that a is that a base banner lord thing or is that a mod thing because i've never seen that in the base game so, <laughs> I've never seen that in the base game. Okay, so, yeah, as you can see, yeah, I think my party size did increase slightly. Um, so, yeah, it seems to have, it, it does seem to have made a difference. Um, the, uh, the, the, the perk that we took, or at least I hope so. Okay, so let's increase party size once again by 10%. And then we are going to just go over to this town real fast, because I actually do realize now that I actually have some prisoners that I needed to sell. And I haven't done that for quite some time. And my prisoners are indeed slowing me down quite dramatically. And I would really appreciate that they didn't do that. So let's do that. Uh, yeah, by the way, every single one of these, right? Every single one of these companions. She looks absolutely amazing, by the way. Look at look at this armor. Look at this armor. She looks so, so cool. Um, yeah, so every single one of these companions is going to be around 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 gold. Uh, as far as I'm aware. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I never doubted them, really. I never doubted them. I, I'm always extremely, extremely impressed whenever the Old Realms modding team comes out with something. Because th this is just incredible. It really is. I mean, literally, look at this. This is so so amazing ah oh, you know it's so good it really is they have done i i don't know I, I i don't have the words for it okay i don't have the words for it you know they have gone above and beyond to be able to create such an immersive experience here and look we even have we even have this woman dancing Look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so yeah, she's 20,000, as you can see right there. I was just going to speak to her just so that you could see that she is indeed very expensive. And uh, there's the game host. I'm obviously not going to be doing anything with him. And unfortunately for me, my prisoners were only going to sell for 45 gold. Yes. So unfortunately for me, yeah, we don't really have a huge amount. I would like to be able to fight some of these beast men but I am not going to get the opportunity to do that, am I? Mm-hmm. Ah, dearie me. Okay, well, uh, let's move on, and uh, we'll actually see... Okay, my scouting skill did actually increase. Let's increase my day travel speed, and we'll just continue onward. There is a camp here. Do you think I could actually... F oh, you know what? I kind of want to do that, but I also want to complete the task. Okay, so let's actually just go and try to complete the task first. But I really want to do the Beastman hideout. And now we get the opportunity to actually walk through a proper wood elf village as well. Which is so, so cool. Alright, um, I think I need to go over there, don't I? Um, wait a minute. <laughs> Am I... Oh, no, no, there it is. Uh, oh, how do I... <laughs> how do I get up there? Oh, no, I need to find a way up there. All right, so as is uh, the uh, classic Wood Elf standard, they do like to build these wonderful winding staircases. And so as a result, all I had to do was just find the, uh, the first one that took me up here. And hopefully we're going to be able to use this to go on to the top of this little, um, this little bluff area, little mountain hill area, and we'll be able to find our quest target. I do have a knife. You know, he's got a knife. Run! Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to speak 
Uh, actually, wait a minute. Are these are these even the people that I need to speak to? I have no idea right now. Ah, uh, yes. Are you one of the bounty hunters sent by this person to track us like we're animals or something? Look, friend, we've done nothing wrong. As you may have figured out already, this woman and I, we love each other. I didn't force her to do anything. He is right. I ran away with him willingly. I love me fa- I love- I love me father, is, is what I was about to say. <laughs> Let's not. I love my father, but he can be such a tyrant. Please, sir, if you believe in freedom and love, please leave us be. Okay. Uh, how do I know he's not forcing you to say that? Hmm, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. He cares nothing about me. Okay, so I am never, ever going to be able to... <gasps> I did it? Okay. I... Oh. Alright. Um. <laughs> I am always, always very very sure that i'm never going to succeed in any of these checks because the persuasion mini game is always something that i absolutely loathe i really do not like it one bit but apparently we were able to do something very very nice here okay so i now have 800 gold which is actually a lot better than anticipated and there is also a herding quest that i wouldn't mind doing as well so let's very quickly go in here we don't have the quick speak option which is a little bit unfortunate but uh, i understand why not oh ooh. 1800 okay I'm gonna have a problem with this a hundred percent I'm gonna have a problem with this because there's gonna be a herding penalty isn't there I think there's gonna be a herding penalty no no we don't have a herding penalty are you serious oh I am so surprised I actually thought there would be a herding penalty almost instantaneously from us doing this uh, let me actually just see and uh, it's not gonna really increase my speed that much okay so I will literally just go over to the Glade of Eternal Night. This is one of the most fantastic uh, quests that I have ever seen in regards to its reward early on. Oh no, it's this guy. Oh yeah, I remember this event from the, the previous version. I do not like this guy one bit. Anyway, as you continue your travels along a meandering road, the soft whispers of the breeze accompany your every step. You spot a mysterious figure approaching with confident strides. As they draw nearer, the glint of a finely crafted rapier catches your eye. The stranger stops before you, a warm smile on their face as they appraise you. Ah, what a stroke of luck to meet a band of worthy warriors on this lonely path, they say. I am Vittorio de Luca, a master of the blade from the distant lands of Tylea. I have journeyed far and wide, seeking a worthy adversary who can match my skills in combat, and now fate has led me to you. Care to prove your skills in a friendly duel with a little wager to make it exciting? Okay, so I'm going to give you the lowdown here. This guy is insane. He has some of the highest stats and the fastest attack speed I have ever seen in my life. We're going to accept the challenge just so that you can see that too. And uh, yes, intrigued by the pro pro proposition, you return their smile, curious about the stakes they propose. A duel with a wager, I'm listening. You reply, open to the idea. The duelist's eyes sparkle with anticipation as they explain the terms. If you win, I shall offer a sum of 5,000 gold coins as a testament to your skill. Should I prove triumphant, I ask for nothing more than the honor of having tested my skills against yours. With a gleam of excitement in your eyes, you accept the duelist's, uh, duelist's challenge and a determined smile crosses your face. Very well, you say. I accept your offer, Vittorio De Luca. Let us make this duel one to remember. As your fellow warriors cheer and support, you order them to make camp by the roadside, turning the clearing into an impromptu arena. With the arena ready, you step into the center, your heart pounding with anticipation. Your fellow warriors gather around, forming a circle to watch the contest. Their expressions a mix of excitement and pride. And this is where we get to go in and actually fight the guy, and you will see exactly the reason why this guy is probably one of the most troublesome individuals I have ever seen. And I'm probably going to instantly die as soon as he hits me once. Come on now. Are you serious? What is he actually doing right now? Is he serious? Have they made him easier? I think they've made him easier. I'm going to say it now. I'm calling it now. They've made him easier, I think. 
because there is no way I, I was I was dead here before very very quickly uh, when I was was playing the previous version and um, there is no way ever I would be able to do this much damage to him okay uh, oh, oh, oh there we go okay yeah that's some damage Ooh, there we go. He got me. All right. I have no idea how much HP he actually had left, but I was wailing on him for about five minutes. And I did three damage every single time. So, yes. There you go. <laughs> uh, your fellow warriors watch in silent respect as Vittorio De Luca, the renowned Tylean duelist, emerges victorious from the fierce contest. You acknowledge his skill and so on and so on and so on. And if you would like to read that, you can by all means. But they have, uh, the developers have definitely uh, tuned this guy a little bit less harshly than he was before. Because I remember very vividly this guy being uh, basically one of the most insane uh, characters in the whole game, pretty much. And he is now no longer that. He is a lot easier to deal with. Uh, what's actually going on here? <gasps> ah! Oh, I'm wo oh, I'm wounded? Are you serious? Oh, wow. Okay, I would have actually liked to have gone in. You know what? I'm literally just going to auto-resolve. Going to auto-resolve against these guys, because there's no way I'm going to lose a huge amount. And we gained some renown for this. We gained a dryad. We gained some prisoners. So, why not? Why Why should I not, you know? And there we go. We also gained some, uh, we gained some leadership skill, too. Very nice. Okay, so bear in mind, that one of the main things that we have to be very, very careful of here is the fact that I cannot over-encumber myself with armor. That is going to make a big difference to our spell casting. So generally, it is not a good idea to do that. So uh, yeah, that is indeed going to be a little bit problematic. However, we just have to make sure that we know, you know, what's actually going on. We can't just randomly uh, do whatever we think with uh, upgrading our armor and things like that. We can't just go, oh yeah, that has more protection. Oh, I should really do that. No, 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 because that is going to reduce the uh, regeneration rate of our um, of our abilities. So that's obviously a thing. Uh, I'm still looking for something else here. Look at this. Charge is increased by 50%. What what is that? What does that mean? Yeah. So the career ability, cool spirits. Every point in spellcraft increases the chance by is there additional tree spirits. Join join the combat. I see. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I have no idea what that means. I I don't know how to use that um that thing, but it doesn't really matter, I suppose, because we are now here. We can deliver the hurt, and we're going to get a wonderful wonderful reward of eighteen hundred gold, which is far and away much much better than I ever thought. I was going Isha to get. You, kin. Ooh, and they've got some really nice custom voice lines as well. I very much appreciate that. Okay, so there you go. I bought the ten cow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I brought the ten cows. There we go, including my mother. Ah, that's fantastic. Okay, so there you go. We are otherwise completely and utterly done with everything we needed to do here. Because look at look at the amount of experience I've gained. The amount of money I've gained, I'm going to be selling all of these. 1600 can sell all of these as well if I don't want to have a shield. But I think a shield is probably going to be a bit too heavy. So I'm going to sell that too. And we are otherwise probably going to be buying some horses, but not in this place. So there we go. I've now just gained another 3500, which is actually amazing. Anyway. That is going to be it for this episode. If you would like to check out the old realms, there will be a link in the description. There's also the mod load order and so on and so forth down in the description too. So you can take a look at that if you so desire. And otherwise, if you want to see more, by all means, just, you know, caress the like button a little bit. And make sure that you, you know, you treat it with respect. Okay? <laughs> uh, I'm just joking. But yeah, if you want to, that would help me out a lot. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.